He used to be so sick that he couldn't even get up out of bed or function in his day-to-day -day life. He is in better shape now at 32 than he was at 18 thanks to diet and lifestyle changes. Hello, hello, and welcome aboard another episode of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. This is your captain speaking, Taylor Morgan. On today's episode, we have another special guest. His name is Dan Gerning. Dan is an entrepreneur and health coach who specializes in diet and nutrition. He is in better shape now at 32 than he was at 18 thanks to diet and lifestyle changes. He used to be so sick that he couldn't even get up out of bed or function in his day-to-day -day life. He was able to heal himself through diet and lifestyle changes along with smart supplementation. Now, Dan's goal is to help you do the same by making healthy eating colorful and delicious. Dan, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, man. Let's set sail. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm not really sure where to start, but uh, let's see. You say your goal is to make healthy eating colorful and delicious. And <laughs> if anybody has seen your Instagram, that is absolutely the case. I think you post the best pictures of food. Sorry, Brooke, to my girlfriend. Um, <laughs> you post the most like colorful and delicious looking food that I've ever seen, which is exactly what you say your goal is. So um, I guess let's start with what got you into this, you know, health and lifestyle change. Like talk to me a little bit about your journey from, you know, sickness to where you are now. For sure. Well, first off, what's up, everybody? It's good to be here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. Taylor and I have been friends kind of from afar for a while. So it's good to sit down and, and talk face to face. But yeah, you know, it started when I was young, um, and I didn't, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was always sick when I was a kid. You know, I, I always had stomach problems. I had bad anxiety, so not just, like, physical problems, but, like, mental problems that I didn't connect were, you know, were probably connected until much later in my life. But I was always sick, and in and out of doctor's offices, I had, like, strep throat every other week. I couldn't sleep. I was, you know, as I got a little older, like in high school and middle school, I had, you know, like the big round face. I, I was like skinny fat where like, I wasn't fat, but you know, I just looked a little pudgy and like out of shape. And it was just, it was one of those like questions in my mind that I always wondered, like, there's, there's something going on below the surface here, you know? And I, I couldn't put two and two together for the longest time. I kind of accepted it forever. Um, I, I had kind of a, yeah, I've had kind of a crazy journey and, you know, I just kind of accepted it for a while. Like, Hey, like, this is just the way I feel. And this was in my, like, say late teens. So like high school and early part of college. And then once I graduated, so I graduated with an accounting degree, uh, like, like they always told us, you know, growing up that we got brainwashed into some of us, you know, to get a safe, safe corporate job. So I got my accounting degree. And then graduated, went into the, the field for a while. I'm still actually in the field for now. But, um, you know, my goal, well, I'm sure we'll touch on this later, is to transition out full time and be on my own. But so a couple of years ago, when I was like 25 and 26, it got, it got so bad where I had crippling anxiety, where even like getting out of bed and going to work gave me almost like daily panic attacks, you know? It was weird. Then I had like bad insomnia where I couldn't fall asleep. So I wouldn't fall asleep until like two or three in the morning. And then I would wake up at like four 30 or five. And this happened for, for weeks. Wow. And I was, I was just lost, man. Like I, I had like digestion problems. So like when I was going to the bathroom, excuse me, I was, uh, I was having like undigested stools and food, in my stools, having blood in my stools, uh, just a, a bunch of weird stuff, bad anxiety, horrible brain fog, or like I couldn't even remember what I had done the morning before or like where I was coming from. It, it was Man. it was scary stuff. Like it felt like I had Alzheimer's almost like at 26 or 27, you know, like, yeah. so then at that point, you know, that's when I got desperate and I had to do something different. So my, my first step was for me, uh, my journey was reaching out actually to a health coach, a holistic health coach 
on my own because I went I went the conventional doctor route, and they, you know, they ran some labs but couldn't couldn't tell me a lot and didn't give me much to work with. So I was like, well, forget that. I can't go that route again. I'm gonna have to go another route. So I went the holistic health route. And then he, at the time, got me on a, a cleaner diet and he put me on the keto diet at the time. And uh, so I did that for six to nine months or so. And that started turning some things around. You know, my brain started clearing up a little bit. So at that time, you know, he was putting me on like two a day shakes. So I'm big on smoothies and like protein shakes, like make your own protein shakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was big on that. So like I was on a lot of foods that were easily digestible because my digestion was just such a mess from, from years of just eating what, what I thought, I guess I didn't know any better was normal food. You know, that Americans eat, you know, processed heavy foods, fast foods, mm -hmm. you know, things where if you're not sick or if you're healthy ish, at least on the outside and you feel okay, you might not think twice about, but for me, so like all that went to the side and I just slowly started, I guess, making changes over time. So I worked with him for, like I said, six to nine months and I started to see some positive changes. And then after that, I left just to, to keep branching on my own to explore other diets and other, I guess, ways of eating besides just the keto diet. So then I, I ventured all over. I, I was vegan for a while, you know, whole food vegan. I'm not vegan now. You know, I've I, I leaned uh, towards the con carnivore type route too, where it was heavy meat. Um, you know, I've been kind of all over the spectrum, just exploring and trying to find what, uh, what works best for me. But so I guess to, to sum that up, I, I ended up where I am today because of the disaster of, of health I was in, you know, before. So that's, that's kind of what led me into this field. It was just, really to, to heal myself because uh, like conventional doctors couldn't give me anything. And, um, you know, you, you really are kind of responsible for your own health, you know, and being your own health advocate. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, it sounds like you had to, you know, basically hit rock bottom to the point where you couldn't even function normally in your daily life before you started to seek, you know, some type of alternative approach to what you were going through. I think so many uh, listeners out there have a lot of the symptoms that you had, but they just think that it's normal just because they've had them their whole entire life. And they're just like, well, this is how I feel. This is, you know, I was born this way, whatever they think. And because of that, they don't know of any alternatives, right? So what would you say to somebody who is experiencing some of these, some of the early issues that you experienced? Uh, what would you say to them? Yeah, I, I would say first, I'm sorry um, that, that you have to deal with that. And just know that this, this was a big eye, eye opener for me too, that just because you're experiencing, experiencing that and you've been experiencing that your whole life, that's not how an optimal human body is meant to feel, you know? So like for me, once I got even a couple more years down the road, from the health coach and kind of when he, how he opened my eyes to some different ways of eating and living. Um, there, there's way better ways to feel, you know, you can wake up after a rested night's sleep, you know, you can sleep through a whole night. You can not have digestion problems. Like now, um, I later on down the road too, I implemented, uh, as you know, we've talked about like, uh, intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. I love intermittent fasting and it's, uh, it's, it's great for a lot of things, but, um, like one of my big issues too, was like blood sugar dysregulation. And that was tied into a lot of things. I'm sure with stress, yeah. but not, you know, the not sleeping and then eating, you know, need a bunch of garbage too, you know, your blood sugars up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah. And when I, at that time I couldn't go more than a couple hours, you know, without eating. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's crazy to think now, but you know, I, I would just say, you know, I've been in your shoes and I would, I would challenge whoever's feeling that way to, you know, to, to take a long look in the mirror really and, and journal, even if you have to, that helped me with, you know, take like taking that half step back and, and just observing and being like, okay, well, 
I eat this food and then an hour or two later, I feel a certain type of way. Or say, you know, I, I did this, say for fasting, you know, I fasted this day or I fasted a week straight. This is how I felt in the afternoon before I, I ate calories for the first time. So I, I would say that that's probably one of the biggest tips that I could give to someone right off the bat is just creating that like awareness in yourself. Mm -hmm. So like journal, take a step back, be aware of, of be aware of what you're putting in your mouth first, and then be aware of how you feel after. If you're, if you're struggling, if you're struggling with brain fog, like you said that a lot of people do, you know, brain fog is a big issue. Uh, digestion issues, uh, hormone issues these days is a big thing too, especially for, well, men and women, but especially for men, you know, and, and a lot of the things that we eat today for those who, who aren't careful with what we put in our bodies, you know, it's a lot of it is, is, uh, estrogen promoting, you know, foods yeah, and soils soy products. That, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of ways you can go with it, but I think the, the first big step would be just uh, to journal and, and be aware exactly what you're doing. And then that way, you know, the days don't kind of get lost in your own head where you can track. Um, you can like correlate certain foods to certain feelings. That yeah. was a big eye opener for me. Yeah, that, that's a good idea, because especially if you have brain fog, it can be difficult to, like you said, recall even what you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and just to clarify for everybody, you said, you know, if you fast for a week straight, I don't recommend starting off with just completely fasting for a week straight. You got to build up to that. Um, just kind for of sure. a, a just, disclaimer. Sorry, to, clar to clarify, yeah, I meant like like a 16 or 18 hour window every week. So, yeah, there we go. Every yeah. day of the week. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Not a week uh -huh. straight. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that. Um, you know, we're both big into the holistic side of things and, you know, people going through their daily life, just not feeling great, kind of just feeling like, eh, maybe they have these issues, digestion issues, brain fog, whatever it is, that is not normal. Just to reiterate this, the human body, the optimized human body, their, you know, normal state is thriving. Like that is your normal but because we've gone so far away from that in our you know modern society people think the normal is having these issues and having brain fog you know if you forget something oh that's just normal or it's aging if you're getting older whatever it is but it's not if you live basically like how our ancestors lived out in nature eating healthy whole foods you know exercising um that is what you know, healthy feels like. And a lot of times people don't know what they could feel like because they've never felt that way before. And so I, exactly. I think that's good yep. that the suggestion you gave is to journal <laughs> and start writing down how you feel each day and start to notice those correlations between, okay, when I ate a lot of carbs, I felt good immediately after, but then an hour later, I felt like shit and I felt guilty <laughs> and this and that. So yeah, journaling can be a, a fantastic way to, to start to recognize those things. You can even, uh, and sorry not to interrupt, but you can even, a good way to do it too could be, uh, you can even test it, you know, on two days in a row. So say one day, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not promoting unhealthy eating by any means, but say, you know, say gets, you know, get some fast food one day or get what you normally eat for a meal and then note how you feel a couple hours later. And then the next day, you know, depending on what your diet is for lunch, say it's, uh, you know, a grass fed steak and potatoes or something, you know or some, some asparagus or something. And then, you know, try to, if, if you really want to test it, do two completely opposite meal ideas. So like heavily processed, just in that example, it's heavily processed, you know, bad oils, high fat, the bad fats. And then, you know, on the, on the, on that other side, like the grass fed steak and asparagus or potatoes or whatever you got, you know, the, the quick digesting carbs, you know, for energy, but you've still got the healthy fats from the steak and, uh, you know, the, the omegas and all that jazz. So you've got, you know, you've got the, the two completely different sides of the sides of the spectrum. So that would be a good way to test it too. If you wanted to test it in yourself with two completely different, you know, an unhealthy meal versus a much, much healthier meal. Right. 
And I think another good way to to start, you know, a more health focused lifestyle is to implement a morning ritual. And I know you're big on morning rituals, as am I. Um, so explain to people what your morning ritual is. What what are some of your daily habits? Got a lot of them. Um, and I, I, I haven't created any of these. You know, I, I try to be a student of experts, really. You know, there's a lot of people who've done it before I am and who are you know, a hundredfold more successful than I am. So I just try to learn from the best and, um, you know, any mentors that I've read or watched along the way. So what I always do is, uh, you know, the, one of the things I do is it's kind of a morning ritual, but it's a night ritual too. I, I wear, uh, I'll wear headphones to bed and I'll listen to, it's not binaural beats, but it's like affirmations, like different affirmations coming in each year. Hmm. So what they, what they say is, without getting, I guess, too, too deep in the weeds, but you know, our brain is, there's different levels to the brain. So you've got like the lizard brain, you know, the conscious part of the brain, which is your thoughts. And then, you know, like the subconscious mind too, they say, you know, psychologists and experts and stuff. So the reason why I listen to, to uh, positive affirmations and money and business affirmations and self-esteem affirmations while I sleep is you know, that, that conscious part of my brain isn't operating because it's sleeping. Mm -hmm. So, so they say, if you do that, you know, those, those, uh, little nuggets of, uh, affirmations can maybe sneak into that subconscious mind a little easier. Yeah. So, so that's one of the big things. And I've, since I've done that, that's a, a fairly new one for me. I've done that maybe the last two and a half, three months or so. And I've, I've noticed not even, uh, you know, just like universe and business changes and all that, but like on a, a, a tangible level, just like my own feeling of myself mm -hmm. and how I feel and just like a self-esteem type level. So that's, that's been a big, big thing for me lately. Where, so where can people that. find that? Um, you know, honestly, I just, you can find something on YouTube. Uh, just find like, uh, what would you search? Yeah. um, so like I searched just like in, say like an eight hour, sleep affirmations i think or okay. something like that so they'll have like the you know the calming binaural beats kind of in the background for your brain okay yeah because uh, I've, I've mentioned binaural beats before and and how those okay. can help shift your your brain waves into whatever it is a more <laughs> relaxed state deep sleep more alert and focused you know whatever beat you're, you're talking about i haven't heard of the, the affirmations but that sounds good because part of why uh, you know conscience or conscious affirmations are so important is because, you know, the more you say it and you created a, a habit out of it, the more that does get ingrained into your head. So if you can have that playing eight hours while you're sleeping in combination with binaural beats, as long as it doesn't affect your sleep, like if, if you're the type of right. person who just needs complete silence, then obviously don't do this. But right. like my girlfriend, for example, she sleeps with um, headphones in too. She listens to podcasts. I don't know how she does that, but it helps her sleep. So maybe okay. uh, I'll, I'll have her try switching over to these affirmations. So, yeah, so. it's changed my life, man, already. And I'm, I'm excited to see how that, how that changes things even years down the road. So are yeah, you, check, check that out for we'll sure. Do. Um, are you familiar with like EMF uh, and that kind of, you know, Wi-Fi radiation and, and stuff like that? Okay. So what do you yep. do to, to mitigate those effects while you're sleeping? How, how does that work? That's a, that's a great point. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, so your, your body really is a, you know, it's, it's an energy conductor, you know, there's everything in the world, you know, as they say, you know, ener energy from, from grade school, you know, it's not created or destroyed, you know, it just changes different forms. So when you've got that, you know, your Wi-Fi box pumping out all those, uh, those, what is it? Electromagnetic frequency. I think it is. EMF. Yeah. EMFs or oh. EMR electromagnetic radiation. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So all, yeah, all those waves, you know, are, are just shooting all over the house. And, um, especially if you're having sleep problems, that, that can be a, a big, big factor. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so what we do is, um, what I do is I just turn the Wi-Fi off really, you know, I'll, I'll turn the box off. So there's none, um, there's none transmitting while we sleep. Yeah. Okay. I, we do that too. I, we have ours on an on off switch. I was going to say, yeah, that's, 
that's on my to-do list is to have that on off switch. Nice. Yeah. So, so then yep. if you're getting those videos from YouTube, how do you, how do you, you know, listen to that during the night if, if there's no Wi-Fi? and I'm assuming that's, you're that's, airplane mode. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good point. I, um, so I've got it downloaded, so it's not, okay. um, yeah, so it's, it's hard, uh, hard saved on the phone. Perfect. Should, so, yep. Yeah, you're okay. right. I, I do sleep with airplane mode as well. That, and that's a good, um, that's a good uh, point to make too, as well. Cause yeah, if, if that airplane mode isn't on, I'm not sure, I guess what would happen, but it's, you know, if the Wi Fi is off in the house with the off switch, it, you know, you, yeah. you might as well turn it to airplane mode anyway, because there's there's nothing going on. Yeah, it, so. the reason why you got to turn the Wi-Fi off and your phone on airplane mode, or just completely shut it off if you're not using it, is you, your phone still would get signals if you have cell phone service. You know, oh yeah, get that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's I'm glad we kind of touched on that because people would go do this and and think that they're helping their sleep and helping their, you know, their subconscious. But then if you're getting blasted by EMFs, that could actually cause more stress, more inflammation, more brain fog for those eight hours while you're sleeping. So uh, just to, just to clarify there, we kind of went on a rabbit hole on, on the first thing you mentioned in your, you know, rituals, but um, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, continue. For sure. Yeah. So some other stuff I do every day. Um, the first thing I do when my brain is fresh, so I'll wake up in the morning and my goal is to write, I'll try to write, um, so I've got like a notepad by my bed, a big, uh, you know, one of the bigger ones. And I try to write a full page of, you know, in the present tense, what my life, I pretend like I'm living my life like 10 years from now. So like what my ideal life is, but, but in the present tense, mm. you know, it's like, oh, say, so for me, like, say I'm making, I'll write like, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I just checked my bank account. I just woke up and I made, you know, I just realized I made $30,000 the past month net. Just as an example, you know, I'm, I'm traveling the world. I'm, but I try to be as specific as possible. So it's like, Hey, you know, like I'm, I'm traveling to Bali today. I'm, you know, what, whatever your, whatever your goals and dreams are that you want to see for your life down the road. You know, I, I write that down and I try to write for a full page but but the key is to keep it in the present tense because your brain can't you know your, your brain doesn't see the future it only sees really the present mm -hmm. so 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 a big key there is to write it in the in the present tense as if it's happening as if it like just happened like say five seconds ago yeah kind of thing so you don't want to write like i am going to be a millionaire i in 10 years you know I, that's I, and I'm not a, a psychologist by any means, but I've read that it's very important to, to make sure and keep it present in that present tense. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll do that right after, um, excuse me, while I'm up. That's the first thing I do. And then I'll, after that, I'll jump into just not too long, maybe I would say 15 minutes of just like a, a peaceful you know, meditation where, and sometimes I'll, I'll use headphones and listen to something. Sometimes I'll just sit there and, you know, just take in the silence in my bedroom. And that way, you know, it, it kind of sets the tone for the day. Um, if, if you wake up and the first thing you think of is, oh, you know, I've got this X, Y, and Z to do today. I've, I've got a million things to do and I've got no time to do it. Well, you know, then you're setting to the tone for your day to start in, in chaos and Reaction for me, mode. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I want to start the day, even though I, in reality, I probably do have a ton of things to do that day. I want to start the day in as peaceful a state as I can and set, set that baseline tone for the day. So I'm not starting up here, you know, from an emotional standpoint, I'm starting at a nice calm level. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that. And then from there, I'll jump into uh, one of your favorites, the cold shower. <laughs> yep. And uh, funny you mentioned that because uh, on my last podcast and the past, I don't know, 10 podcasts, whatever, <laughs> every single one of my guests has mentioned that they take cold showers. And I really emphasize this on my last podcast. And so just to reiterate again, if you have not jumped on the cold shower train yet, try it like 
there's probably something to it. If every single one of my high-performing guests and high-performing clients that I coach, they're all doing this. So there's definitely some correlation there. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you, you mentioned that. What kind of effects uh, have you seen from it or why do you take the cold showers? Yeah, you know, for me, I, I've read a bunch of stuff and, and I, I can't vouch to, you know, what's true or not, whether it's, you know, all the hormone stuff and uh, especially for males, you know, for guys, for us guys, you know, hormones, uh, a good little spike, you know, cortisol spike to kind of wake us up and get us ready for the day. Um, I, I guess I do it at a more primitive level, just for a sense of, of discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try to, I, for me, like one of my core values is, you know, discipline, whether it's, you know, doing things you don't necessarily want to do, you know, doing things when you say you're going to do them. Um, I know you're a military guy as well, so you can probably resonate with some of that, but it's one of those things where it's, you know, you just, it might not feel great, especially when you start it at first. And when you, as you gradually start maybe adding this to your daily routine for anybody who's listening, but there's just something about doing it, knowing that it might suck for a little bit and doing it anyway. So I think that's a big reason why I do it more than anything. 100%. I, um, I need to put myself, I know the more uncomfortable situations I've put myself in, the better the better I handle those, those uncomfortable moments or ones like them in life that I don't expect. Yeah. Um, and I, I've, I've learned that lesson the hard way. So I try to, I try to, as much as I can put myself in uncomfortable situations. And that's, that's a, a very basic one, but mm -hmm. it's kind of a good tone setter for the day, yeah. you know? So I'll, I'll start it as, you know, even as cold as I can get, and, you know, you get, it's kind of like a cold, a cold tub too. You know, you just got to jump in and, yeah. you know, after a couple seconds, you know, your body gets used to it anyway and it's nothing. So, yeah, but it's, it's a good kind of brain hack too, you know, to, to trick your brain into thinking, okay, well, uncomfortable situation done, handled it on to, on to the next one that pops up yeah. in your life, you know, today, tomorrow, who knows, who knows when. Yeah. So, and, and I want to touch on, you know, we're doing this, because we want to get uncomfortable. And I think a lot of people live their lives the opposite way. They want to always seek out the comfort, but it's kind of this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, maybe not oxymoron, but, uh, yeah. yep. whatever the, the word is escaping me right now, but people seek out comfort. And in reality, what they get is discomfort because right. they're not happy with their life. They have anxiety, they have stress, they're not happy with their body. And that's because they always choose comfort. They choose the immediate gratification. They choose the cake over the salad, or they choose sitting on the couch and watching Netflix instead of getting up and going to the gym. They always choose what will, you know, what their ego thinks is quote unquote safe. Because your ego is always trying, trying to protect you, to keep you out of these, you know, so-called dangerous or uncomfortable situations. And so if you try to stay comfortable, you live your life uncomfortable. But if you seek out these uncomfortable situations, you end up having the most comfort because it's that short-term um, short discomfort that leads to long-term pleasure. So absolutely, taking the cold shower in the morning, not only is it good for discipline, but it's uncomfortable in the moment, yeah. But as you said, it helps you be able to handle stress and uncomfortable situations for the rest of your day. And you start to build that mental resilience. Exactly, yeah. Two of the, well, one of the, I feel like the biggest, biggest factors of how successful your life is gonna be is, like you mentioned, that delayed gratification. You know, can can you, can you hang in the fire long enough to put in the work and not see those changes that you need? Because really, you know, the only people who don't make it in life, whatever they're, whatever they're trying to do and whatever way they want to take their life, you know, it's the person who makes it is just the person who never quit. That's all. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know, when they, when they face an obstacle, and, and I'm not saying, you know, you have to put your head down and, and bang your way through it necessarily. You know, sometimes you're going to have to take a step back and, and kind of see, 
what's working and what's not, where you need to change your behaviors and reassess, you know, realign and, and go maybe a slightly different way. But yeah, no, no change, no positive life change will ever occur unless you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. And, and what's weird and what's, what's frustrating in, in today's world is that uncomfortable situation today isn't getting eaten by a saber tooth tiger. It's not, you know, falling off a cliff. It's not, it's, it's not a life or death. The, the body takes it as a life or death situation, mm -hmm. but, but it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's being cool with possibly failing yeah. temporarily. You know, it's, it's, it's a, like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a discomfort, but it's a, a short-term non life or death discomfort that you just kind of have to, and I'm, and I'm guilty of this too, by it, by all means, you know, I'm, I, I still work through stuff like this, these days, you know, every single day, but it, it's, it's tweaking that, that conscious thought that, Hey, like what's helped me is taking a, again, taking a half step back and thinking, yeah, I'm feeling uncomfortable but am I going to die? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'll even, I'll even say that to myself in the mirror, or even out loud, just acknowledge it. Like, Hey, like Dan, am I going to die? You know, this, this feeling sucks. It's not where I want to be right now, but I, I know I'm getting closer to where I want to be, but am I going to die? And the answer is always no. Yeah. You know, and then I'm like, okay, well then, you know, we got to sack up and keep going. You know, have you heard that, of, that's all um, you can do. That's all you got to do. Have you heard of uh, Tim Ferriss's fear setting exercise? I didn't. No. Yeah. So this is essentially what you're, you know, talking about. It's you know, whenever some situation comes up that you're scared of doing, um, you know, for example, if you're working a corporate nine to five job and you absolutely hate it, and you're thinking about starting um, this side business that you're really passionate about, but you're scared to do that because oh, I won't have health insurance and more. I won't have a steady paycheck. What are my friends and family going to think of me? Whatever all the thoughts are. And so you do the fear setting exercise and you say, okay, what is, what is it that I want to do? What is holding me back from that? And, you know, based on, th there's a YouTube video uh, on it. Just search Tim Ferriss. Sure. Fear setting, yeah. And you come up with a list of like 10 things, 10 of like the worst possible situation like what could happen and then based on those you say okay if this happens then what like is is this what i'm so scared of like if the worst case scenario happens what is actually the worst thing because 99 percent of the things that you worry about never actually happen right you know, it's all sure. things that your mind is coming up with mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely suggest anybody check that out, the, the Tim Ferriss fear setting exercise. And like you said, just ask yourself, are you going to die? Uh, hopefully the answer is no. If the answer is yes, yes. get the fuck out of there. <laughs> but right. yeah, I don't want to yeah. go down all these rabbit holes for every single thing. So because I, I definitely want to touch on um, more diet and, and uh, nutrition sure. and lifestyle stuff. So yeah, real quickly. Uh, finish up it, the rest of your, your morning ritual. So after the cold shower, what comes next? That's, that's pretty much it for me. You know, once, once I do that, and if I do those three things, you know, the, the full page of journal of my, my future life, but in the present tense of where I want my life to be the cold shower or, or sorry, the, I missed the, the 10 to 15 minute kind of meditation reset, set the tone for the day with or without headphones, with or without music, it might be in silence. And then the cold shower for me, um, I found that that kind of sets my tone for the day. So for me, that's about it. And then okay. I'm good to jump, good to jump in the day. And that usually takes between probably about 45 minutes or so. Okay. So I try to, I try to keep it short. You know, everybody has busy days. Everybody has stuff to do obligations. So for me, that's short and sweet. And then it, it, I'm ready for the day after that. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about using food for fuel as opposed to just thinking of food as, you know, it tastes good or it's convenient, it's it's pleasurable. Let's let's talk a little bit about how we can start to differentiate those two things and how by doing so it will basically change your whole life for the better. For sure. Gosh, there's so 
so most people, you know, in, in society today, they eat a lot of highly processed, um, high in like vegetable oils, high in unhealthy, say trans fats or unhealthy saturated fats. And, and what happens then is, you know, you, you eat that stuff. A lot of people eat, you know, for that, for that dopamine spike in the brain. So anytime you eat something like that, where it's very salty, <clears throat> excuse me, or very sweet. So some candy or, you know, a candy bar or, or whatever, something high in like artificial sugar, added sugar, you know, your, your brain gets that, that dopamine spike, that feel good, that feel good hormone, you know, that excited hormone. So, you know, if, if you're eating for pleasure, just know that anytime you eat something like that, it's, it's a food that's high in unhealthy fats. It's high in highly easily digestible carbs that don't provide, you know, lasting energy for the body to use. So that's why a lot of people, when, when they eat, say like, uh, you know, a donut and a pancake or something for breakfast, well, or a pastry, that's why, and I never put this two and two together when I was younger, but that's why at nine 30 or 10 o'clock, well, I'm starving again, you know, cause my body burned through all that, all that crap, you know, that easy sugar there, you know, there's no substance to the food yeah. that, that my body can use for fuel to build muscle, to, to fuel my brain <clears throat> or any of that. So the switch is the thing that I always say <clears throat> and tell people is try, you need, you need to try and incorporate a balanced macronutrient profile with each meal. So like a meal like that, for example, say, say like, you know, your average pancake or a donut or, or a bowl of cereal, whatever, a commercial bowl of cereal. Well, that, that's a food that's very high in simple carbohydrates and, and not a lot else. And, and what we want to shoot for, contrast that with say a breakfast, if you eat breakfast of, you know, say, uh, you know, grass fed pasture raised omelet with, you know, avocado, for example, and maybe, maybe, uh, some, fried potatoes and avocado oil or something. In that omelet, omelet example, you've got the protein, you've got healthy fats, monounsaturated fats with the avocado. And then, you know, your body, it needs some carbs to, to function, obviously, and to run the, run the you know, the, the vehicle here. So, you know, the potatoes would be, say, the, the simple carb that, that the body could use right away for fuel. So that, that would be the difference, I would say. You know, it's eating, it's contrasting that, that imbalanced macronutrient profile meal that's probably high in sugar, probably high in too, probably too high in simple carbohydrates versus shooting for a more whole food, come out of the ground, come out, come out of an animal, raised by an animal if, if you're if you're a meat eater. Um, you know, mac, macronutrient pro profile balanced meal. Yeah. And when you when you eat like that, you've got sustained energy. You've got, you've got protein that your muscles can use if you're weight, if you're weight training. And even if you're not, you know, your body needs protein, protein for the, for the muscles you have mm -hmm. to maintain that muscle anyway, and to maintain a muscle mass. So I, I would say that's the biggest difference, you know, really focusing on a balanced macronutrient profile at every meal and utilizing foods like as close to nature as you can. Mm -hmm is the best way I can summarize it. I think that's, that's my, uh, my personal mantra for my eating style. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Real quick. I want to mention, you know, just breakfast in general, because the, the examples you gave for breakfast, like pancakes, donuts, cereal, you know, all of and pastries, all of that is like the traditional, you know, breakfast. That's what people think of when they think of breakfast. And, um, actually, heard this on uh, a Gary V post that he just recently put out. Um, and I've heard this before, but you know, the phrase breakfast is the most important meal of the day. That was a slogan, a marketing slogan that was used by the cereal and the dairy industry to get you to obviously buy more of their product. And that's just simply not true. Breakfast is not essential. I, I, I think that one of the only times that you need to eat breakfast. There's other, um, there's other cases for this, but, 
a lot of times you should only eat breakfast if you're trying to reset your circadian rhythm because food is one of the major driving uh, factors in your circadian rhythm. Um, the three being uh, light, movement, and food. So if you're trying, like if you are traveling to the East Coast and you want to get on East Coast time faster, then yeah, eat a big breakfast so your body, it signals to your body that it's morning time. If you're just trying to live a healthy lifestyle to look good naked, you don't have to eat breakfast. If you want to, great, do it. But we'll talk about some better options than the pancakes and donuts and all that stuff. Um, and we kind of already talked about intermittent fasting. It's totally okay to skip a meal. You will not die if you skip a meal. You will not die if you skip three meals. Like your body has enough to, uh, to keep you alive. And it's actually good for you because of autophagy and helps with digestion and all that stuff. And so you think, okay, I, I don't eat pancakes, I don't eat donuts, I don't eat pastries, I'll do the healthy option and go for a bagel, or I'll go for oatmeal. Those are essentially the exact same thing. A bagel is just a non frosted donut. And oatmeal right. is just, you know, it's just sugar. That's, that's all it is. So yeah, that's just that just kind of bugs me that there's so much marketing around those types of breakfast foods when pasture raised eggs and you know heritage breed bacon is probably two of the most nutrient dense and best for you foods that you can eat with avocado and that's like you know some people know about that but you know it's it's really not as popular as the you know Starbucks Dunkin Donuts pastry options so that just kind of bugs me yeah um, so yeah one of the one of the biggest thing that biggest things that changed my life and my physique and my mind was like you said, incorporated daily between 16 to 18 hour fasting windows every day, preferably closer to 18. You know, I'll try and stretch it, stretch it as much as I can, but with, I try not to push it too hard for myself with strength training that I love to do, but yeah, it's, it's a total, a total marketing ploy to have breakfast. You know, one of the, one of the things I try to keep in my mind as well is, you know, even though we, we feel so advanced and we're, you know, we're spoiled in today's society with all the food options available, you know, think back to your ancestors 2000 years ago, you know, there, there wasn't food around to have breakfast every day, you know, so, so your body has that machinery to go without consuming calories for a certain amount of time. And if you think back to our ancestors, they went, I'm sure they went way longer than 16 hours, you know, without eating. So I had to go hunt it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Could have been, could have been maybe a week till the next kill. So mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, exactly. I just want to reiterate, don't worry about not consuming calories or it being unhealthy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's ingrained and wired into the, the human body to go, uh, to go without consuming calories. So mm -hmm. skipping breakfast is, is nothing. And like you said, it's, it's actually a positive, yeah. not, not negative. And, and just a disclaimer for females if you are a hormonally active female, meaning like, you know, pre-menopause, uh, it's not advised to do consistent fast longer than 14 hours just because it messes with your hormones. So for girls out there, I would say if you want to do daily intermittent fasting, 14 hours should be the cutoff. Guys, it's OK to do up to 18 hours, like you said, uh, 20 hours, stuff like that. Um but for girls, like if you have digestive issues, I would definitely recommend like a 24 hour fast just to clean everything out and then refuel your body with, you know, good food to, to heal all of that stuff. So um, let's get into supplementation. So what, so obviously supplementation is just that supplementing, you know, that should not be the bulk of your diet. And I know you're big on whole, you know, healthy, real foods. But on top of that, what does your supplement <clears throat> protocol look like? For sure. Yeah, it's 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 always fluid, just a disclaimer for, for anybody listening. You know, I, I'm a, a hacker and a tweaker by nature. So, but right now what I'm doing is, uh, there, there's a few things I use. So being a male, you know, I, I take different things that, just also a, dis a disclaimer that might not benefit um, any girls out there listening, you know, my, my supplement regimen is tailored towards male, uh, strength trainer, 
hormone out optimizer, that type of thing, just to, to put that out there in the open first. But so what I take, I try to keep it simple, but I do uh, a D3 K2 supplement uh, every day, non-negotiable to start with. And you want to take that with some sort of a fat carrier. So, so say, you know, take it with your eggs. If you eat eggs, I, I love uh, eggs. So I'll even have like a, say a breakfast meal at lunch. Cause I love eggs. So, and that's, that's another thing, you know, just because you love breakfast, breakfast food, healthy breakfast food, doesn't mean you can't have breakfast food, you know, just push it back to your first meal of the day at 11 or 12 or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, D3 K2 is important for bones. Uh, vitamin D for males, especially is a, is a, a big, really it's a, it's a hormone, not a vitamin. Yeah. So it's very important for uh, testosterone. So that's why I take it. Uh, and immune big, health, especially everything going on right now huge. in the world, immune health for sure. You know, not to say anything specific, but uh, yeah, vitamin D3 is absolutely a, a crucial supplement. Yeah, for sure. Good point. Yeah, great for the immune system as well. Um, I, I use some other odd ones and not to, to plug, but just so people can see, uh, Macuna Purians, it's, it is a, um, it's a, a, a bean from, I can't, it's, I think it's South America or Central America. Uh, Macuna Purians is, is good for, it's been shown to boost uh, testosterone production and, or at least uh, supplement healthy testosterone production in males. So I take it, it's very, it's very good for the brain too. And uh, Macuna Purians is, is a good natural elevator of dopamine without getting crazy high. Mm. Um, is that, so, is that the brand name or is that actually what the, the specific ingredient is called? Yeah. Macuna Purians is the actual, uh, supplement okay. the ingredient itself. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I haven't heard of that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Check, look, look into it. It's for me, it, it, it's kind of a, I use it too, as like a natural energy boost. Uh, Macuna is good for that. Uh, and then I, I like to create kind of an energy male cocktail basically. So I take that. I take, uh, and just so people can see, uh, cordyceps, mm -hmm. I take as well, which is, uh, it's a mushroom that's, uh, typically found, I think in like China, Tibet, like that area of the world, India, mm -hmm. like Southeast Asia, but, um, you know, it, and it grows high in the mountains. So it's good for, uh, endurance, um, again, a, a good testosterone supplement for, for anybody interested, uh, energy, uh, mushrooms as well are, are always good for the brain and cognitive stuff. So cordyceps is a big one I take every day. And this one is just for reference, uh, 1500 milligrams per serving for that. And then D3, uh, I, I try to take at least, uh, 3000. Can't remember if that's I use or my use. use. It yeah. is. I Okay. So 3000, I take, I try to take minimal, even, even up to, 5,000. I haven't seen or read anything. And again, I'm not a doctor just for a disclaimer, but seen anything or heard anything uh, bad if, if you take anything that high. So I, I just take, I'll take up to 5,000. Yeah, I would say 5,000 is about the maximum. And that's going to depend okay. on your genetics. Um, you know, some people have genetic variants to where no matter how much sunshine they get, they're not going to convert a lot of vitamin D. It's going to depend on <laughs> where you are in the world. If you live in a place like Seattle, uh, that doesn't get a lot of sunshine year round. That's why there's, um, you know, higher cases of sad seasonal affective disorder, because there's not as much sunshine. Vitamin D plays a huge role in happiness uh, and mood. Um, and then also, this is uh, not to sound racist, but African Americans actually produce less vitamin D3 too, because of the, the melanin in their skin, they, they don't absorb as much from the sun. So, um, and that's partly why uh, I, I saw a study that the African American population got hit harder by COVID because vitamin D plays such a huge role in immune health. And I think it was specifically a study on African Americans in uh, some Nordic country like Iceland or Sweden to where it's, it's cold, people are staying inside, there's not a lot of sun. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of different factors, but I would say the, the three to 5,000 I use is, is a good range. Perfect. That's good to know. 
And then, um, and then just to continue the, the other big one I take is, uh, just so people can see is, uh, a black maca mm. and ma maca root as well. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for male hormones, uh, especially the black, black maca. If, if you're taking maca root for, uh, hormone problems, if you have any, for any, any of the guys listening for men, for some reason, the, the black maca is shown to be in studies, uh, to be more effective for, for hormone issues for men. And I think it's yellow and red maca. If you're a woman is more beneficial for women for whatever reason. Interesting. So, so that's why I take the black maca. And I also take, uh, maca is a, a root vegetable, uh, a tuber from, uh, what is it? South Central America, South America, I yeah. think. So it's, uh, that's another one grown in the Andes mountains, you know, back in the old days that the Incans and the Aztecs used to trade, um, with the Europeans, they would trade, uh, maca root with how valuable it was. So even more valuable than their, than the currency at the time. So wow. it's, uh, it, it, it's a good, uh, again, uh, energy producer, um, good, good, stable energy. It's, it's, uh, black, like I said, it's for the male hormones. So mm -hmm. that's why I take black maca. And then also, and this is just for reference, um, a thousand milligrams per serving is what I take. And I take, um, if you have gut issues and digestion issues, uh, it can, people have said that it can cause some di digestion type things. So get, uh, gelatinized if, if you have digestion and, uh, stomach bowel issues. Mm. And I, I get gelatinized anyway, just because they also say it might be more, might be more, uh, easily digestible and absorbed by the body. Like, so yeah, if you want to lean, yeah, if you want to lean safer, get, uh, gelatinized. Okay. Yeah. I use that. I use maca. Um, I have not heard of black maca though. So I'll, I'll, okay. I'll have to look into that. I'll, I'll send you some stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. Send me the, send me the link like for, for that, that stuff that you mentioned. Um, <laughs> okay. So we got, we got that. Anything else? That's pretty much it. You know, I'll use, um, I've got a couple different, uh, uh, superfood powders I'll use too for, um, say, uh, you know, I, I love throwing like berries and, uh, you know, a good, a good nut butter for extra calories and good fats and, mm -hmm. and avocado and, you know, a good superfood powder in after a workout. And, um, that's usually my first calories of the day is that shake. And for anybody who looks at my feed, those, those bowls are really just my shakes pouring into bowls. So yeah. Any, anybody who looks at my feed, those are really my post-workout shakes, uh, you know, spiffed up for the camera. Nice. So, but yeah, so I, that's really the only other thing, a, a good, clean superfood powder that doesn't have maybe just protein, but it's got some organic vegetables, um, maybe some organic adaptogens, more adaptogens in there. I know the one I take, the one I like the best has... Uh, you know, it's got all the mushroom complexes again. So reishi, uh, lion's mane, all that stuff, you know, good, good stuff for the brain. But, uh, yeah, like you said, I try, I try to lean, you know, whole foods as much as possible, but sometimes, I mean, really that's, you know, it's stone ground, it's, it's freeze dried. So really it's almost like a whole food multivitamin mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, but besides that, you know, the superfood powder and those supplements I mentioned is what, I've, I've found lately that's, that's the cocktail for me that can give me energy, you know, keep my hormones good and just, you know, keep, keep my, my energy level stable and sustained throughout the day. Yeah. You know, the, the cordyceps and the maca root, especially, and then you combine that with the mucunipurians, they all kind of do the same thing, but they're different. You know, they, they hit the body in different ways. I found for me that those three, especially together is, is potent. And then, uh, you know, for any males listening to, uh, just they're, they're also all, uh, aphrodisiacs too. You know, they're good for sex drive and everything that, that keeps guys feeling like guys. So mm -hmm. they, that's, those are good bonuses of those also. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be recording a podcast soon on everything that I'm doing on my road to 220, uh, gaining 30 pounds in three months. And a lot of it is revolving around supplements that support testosterone uh, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about a lot of this stuff. Maca, like I said, is is in my supplementation. Uh, but oh, I'll, have to, are you? 
Uh, right yeah, now right. I'm okay. right now fasted. I'm two Oh seven. Okay. And so I've gained, I think like 13 pounds in like a month and a half. Nice. Um, so you're on, you're on track. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm right yeah. on track. I'm actually ahead of schedule. Uh, I think this week I was supposed to be uh, at 206. So I'm about a pound ahead of that. So nice. things are going wow. well. Uh, you mentioned your feed uh, for Instagram. So talk to me a little bit about content creation and your <laughs> stunning pictures that you take for, for Instagram and on all the brands that you support. Sure. No, thanks, man. Yeah. I, I just, um, I try to keep it fun and try and keep it light. Um, I eat a lot more than what's just on my Instagram, but you know, Instagram colors, you know, users love, love color and vibrancy and, mm -hmm. and, uh, so does the, you know, the algorithm and all that, all that stuff. So yeah, I, I, um, you know, I just try and make it colorful and then I, I've just kind of incorporated some of the brands that I use. So, um, it's pretty Barucas. easy. I know oh. we're both affiliated with Brucas. Yeah, there's a great plug. Yes, I, they're awesome. So they're, they're one of, for anybody who hasn't heard, the, you know, really the healthiest nut in the world. You know, they blow, they blow, you know, peanuts, walnuts, almonds, pecans, Brazil nuts, even Brazil nuts, Brazilian, Brazil nuts are a great, uh, yeah. great ad for, for selenium for anybody who, who eats them. But um, yeah, everything, you know, they've got the, the highest, uh, protein content, the healthiest fat profile. Uh, they've got the highest ORAC score, which is just, uh, it's an antioxidant measurement of the level of antioxidants basically in a particular food. And they have the highest antioxidant score out of all nuts as well, including, like I said, Brazil nuts, which are de decently high on that ORAC scale, mm -hmm. nut wise. So. And then when you combine it, you know, they taste, I, I know you like them too. They taste to me almost like a, a peanut, but like, you know, they're a healthier version almost of a peanut. Yeah. I, I love the taste of them. They're just amazing. amazing. Uh, and, and their nut butter too is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so good. Um, and their trail mix, everything that they make everything. is good. Um, but yeah, I recommend the, the Brugas with the sea salt uh the nut butter and then the, the trail mix you want to throw out your discount code for anybody who wants to sure it's uh yeah if any if anybody wants it's just dan dan 15 and i think it's just 15 percent off you want to give it a try and just uh one other just quick thing about brucas which is cool uh the founder uh darren olean he i think it's for every bag they plant one tree i think in the the serato I, I think it's for every five five pounds or five five pounds bags. okay Something like okay. that. Yeah. But yeah, perfect. So base, yeah, basically, uh, sorry for getting the number on, but they, based on what we buy as, as consumers for them, they replant trees in the, in the Cerrado, which is like the, the grassland really of the Brazilian, uh, country, which, you know, as people know, gets decimated with, uh, deforestation and cattle and everything down there. So any, anything, it, it's cool to support brands as, as well that you've got an amazing macronutrient profile here from the nuts, but they're also doing great things for the, you know, for the rainforest and the Serato down there too, which is cool. So delicious, that's awesome. nutritious, and good for the environment. Um, Can't beat that triple yeah. threat. <laughs> Darren Olean is, is a good dude. Um, his docu series on Netflix, uh, down to earth with Zach Efron. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely support Baruchas. They're they're super good. Um, speaking of Netflix, have you seen uh, Sea Spiracy? That like just came out a few days ago, I think. No, it's it's on my to do list. Yeah, yeah. What I'm, is what is it about? Exactly. It's, it's about so it starts off with the whole plastic pollution problem in the ocean, which I'm super passionate about. But then it goes into why that's actually occurring. Um, so not it goes beyond the specific plastic thing then it gets into overfishing uh and you know overfishing with dolphins and whales and salmon and tuna and all that stuff and then it kind of exposes the fishing industry and the sustainable you know certification industry about how you can't really guarantee anything is sustainable and so it's this whole kind of corrupt system that is mind blowing and so I, I definitely suggest watching it. I personally, sure. 
it's not, it's out now. Yeah, it, it's it's okay. out now. Uh, I personally am not going to be eating fish anymore, um, which is crazy because I you know I was always an advocate of sustainably caught fish, but mm-hmm. now that I I saw that and there's really no regulation behind it, it's like damn, uh, because overfishing is destroying our ocean, and if there's no more ocean, there's no more us. We we can't survive if there's no ocean sure. so yeah, yeah no, i definitely no. recommend checking that out i will no thanks for the plug i will um all right well we're we're going a little bit longer than um than expected but give people or tell people where they can find more about you your coaching your beautiful instagram sure yeah and anybody who wants to check me out um I'm on Instagram, just it's whole, uh, W-H-O-L-E, period, food, dot healing. And yeah, if, you know, comment on my stuff, I try to comment on, on everybody's posts who uh, comment on my pictures and my daily posts. And otherwise, if not, um, if I happen to miss it, just shoot me a DM. And uh, I always, I try to get to those as quick as I can. So I'll get back to you. And but, what about your health coaching? Yeah. Um, I would say just reach out, reach out to me through uh, DM. It kind of depends. I'm open right now. So I try to do what I do is a 90 day one-on-one program. So we'll get one-on-one coaching. And basically what it is, is it just a quick synopsis? It, we're trying to change who we are on a identity level, not on a, a behavioral level. Mm-hmm. So, so by the end of the 90 days, as we make these slow changes through diet, and nutrition and making these, these choice changes, you know, they, they compound, they add on each other. And so after it, yeah, exactly. So after 90 days, you, the goal and the goal is to make you a new person without you even realizing that you're a new person. So you're no longer making decisions to go to the gym. You're no longer making a decision to have a healthy balanced macronutrient profile meal that's just you're who just, you are now. You're just that person. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it makes, what we've done is it makes it much harder to fall back into old habits because we're not changing behaviors. We're changing who, who you are as a person, like you said. So just shoot me a DM. I, tr- I try to keep it limited to a, a handful every 90 day cycle, just because I like to give that. I don't want it to, to, to scale where it, I feel like I'm losing control of like the one-on-one yeah. beauty of it. So I try to keep it within like three to five per 90 days. Just, I found that's kind of my sweet spot. So yeah, if, if you're interested, just uh, shoot me a DM, but just try to be, be specific with the 90 day coaching. So I can kind of filter those, I guess, towards the top, because those are more important. So, cool. but, but give me a shout, you know, I'll get to them. I check all the messages. So. Awesome. And again, that's whole dot food dot healing, correct? Bingo. Yep. Okay. Awesome. You got yeah, guys definitely check out his Instagram. Like I said, it's the most beautiful pictures of smoothie bowls that I have ever seen. Uh, very colorful. Um, and it's yeah, very vibrant. It's, it's awesome. So awesome, Dan. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, spreading your wisdom and, and talking about your journey from you know, your personal kind of sickness from anxiety and uh, digestion issues to, to what you're doing now and helping people overcome that themselves. That's, that's awesome. For sure. Just, just don't ever feel alone. If, if anybody's out there listening that, that uh, is struggling with this and struggling with health stuff, just know that you may have to avoid the conventional doctor route. And you may have to leap outside your comfort zone and and make drastic changes, you know, in your behaviors and your food choices and your thought process, but just know that you're not alone. You're not unique. There's nothing uniquely special about me as a person. You know, I'm just a guy who took life and his health into his own hands. And if, you know, if you make those whole foods as close to earth choices as you can for food, you know, the healing is in those foods, you know, it's like, as the further we've gotten away from who we were as a society and as people, you know, the, the more these health problems have kind of stacked on each other and all these problems that we have today. So just a final plea to, to know that you're not alone. And if you make these changes and, and you stick to them, you, you will also see 
you know, these, these positive changes in your life. Like there's unique, there's nothing uniquely special about me. I just made those changes. That's all. Awesome. Cool. And uh, one final little gift for everybody who made it all the way to the end. Uh, Dan, would you mind sharing with me all of your uh, affiliates and discount links, you know, brands and products that you recommend so I can include them in the show notes. And so people can um, sure. get some healthy products that have been vetted by a uh, nutrition professional. For, for sure. You know, to be honest, I don't do a whole lot of affiliate stuff just because I, it's just not, it's just not who I am, I guess, you know, that's not why I started the Instagram. That's not why it's kind of grown to what it is. Um, but I, I will share what I use, but just know that I don't have affiliate links for them. Mm -hmm. But so just uh, for an example, for one of the superfood powders I use, I don't know if you've heard of them, Kachaba is a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, they, one of the things I like most about them is they, they were very willing to send me their, their heavy metal batch testing, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, protein powders, if you're not careful, can be high in heavy metals, which kind of wreak havoc on the hormonal system and in the brain and sleep and everything. So I, I just, I love the transparency with these guys and they also include a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, uh, adaptogen blends, you know, greens and vegetables, you know, kind of that, that whole spectrum instead of just giving me a, a protein supplement. So I'll use one of their uh, powders. I like uh, another good one is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, UB super is another good powder uh, kind of along those same lines. You know, they're very transparent. They source their ingredients very carefully. They're careful with the suppliers they work with. So I, all the ingredients are clean and vetted and, and everything. And they've also got like that full spectrum. They, they include a uh, full spectrum uh, hemp extract as well in theirs, which is cool. Uh, you don't see that a lot in superfood powders. So UB Super is another one of my favorites. But otherwise, I'm like, there's not. I try to keep it, you know, like I said, as clean as possible. So besides those superfood powders and the supplements and barucas, there's not. It's not a whole lot else I use, to be honest. Cool. Try, you know, try and keep it simple. You can get lost in the mud with, uh, with supplements and uh, powders and everything. So, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, tr find, you know, test and try things and, and find things that work for you. Uh, you know, it, every body is different. So, yeah, test, test and try things and then try and own in on three, four or five that you really notice a difference in and can can benefit you. So that's. That's what I've done. Just pick some good ones and try and keep it simple. Love it. Awesome, Dan. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. And uh, don't forget, live the captain's lifestyle.